Right, Umang. So you took that bold decision of focusing on your career and your education, uh, you know, completely and not focusing on that part-time employment. But um, I'm sure you were minority in the class. Most would have been working. Most would have been looking for that, you know, that job as soon as possible to supplement their expenses because it is expensive, right? Yeah, so most would true. have been doing that. So is there anything that obviously there were, you know, you were meeting every day. Is there anything that you can share any which way from experiences you've learned of others in terms of, you know, finding that job, when is our opportune time to do so and go about looking for those initial jobs, what someone, a student should keep in mind? Yes, absolutely. So a few of my friends were into part-time jobs. And then one thing common that I got to know from all of them was that there are plenty of opportunities, part-time opportunities, whether it is working in hospitality or whether it is working with superstores uh, or, you know, restaurants. So there are plenty of opportunities. The only thing that I would like to add here is uh, don't make it a primary factor. I would say mm -hmm. consult your university, look at your visa conditions and situation. Uh, probably take an advice from the visa compliance team if it is there in your university. And then based on the guidelines, rules and regulations, go uh, for a job that is permitted, uh, you know, as per the, while being compliant with your visa rules and regulations. Uh, with that being said, uh, there are plenty of opportunities, uh, you know, everywhere. So uh, I've seen even, people taking up. Yeah. You know, like you mentioned, your friends, etc. So they also must be coming in from, you know, good jobs, etc. back home. But when we go in there and in part-time accommodate, part-time jobs, you end up looking yeah. at you know, superstores or restaurants and stuff like that. So it's not what we would typically do back here, you know? So is there a right. bit of a mindset change? Is there a bit of a, you know, is it, or is it, is it one of those things where there's that much of, you know, dignity of labor and respect to what you're doing that it's very easy to settle in? Did your friends ever share any such experiences with you which, you know, they wouldn't be, they would all probably work in good companies here who hold yeah. good positions, drawing a good salary, but then now they're, you know, they're in a dominoes, for example, sakes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there, is there yeah. that, is there a, is there a culture shock there? Uh, no, I would say there is a lot of dignity of labor here. There absolutely no discrimination in terms of what kind of job you're doing, whether you're working in a dominoes or you're working in a corporate or you're working in a superstore. Uh, I have not experienced it myself and I have not seen my friends experiencing at least in the circle that I was in. I've never heard a situation where uh, if they are working in a specific part-time environment, they've faced a situation that they weren't comfortable with. I have not heard about that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I believe, you know, things like you working in those guidelines, rules and regulations plays in your mind, if you are working in those guidelines and regulations, you automatically know that, you know, you are abiding by the, the rules and regulations. So you don't have to worry about it a lot. I would say. And there's one thing that I would like to, sorry. Uh, there's one thing that I would like to add there is that, you know, it's, it's my opinion and advice. They're working part-time, um, you know, they should keep in mind the proximity of the public transport because ultimately, you know, a lot of my friends were reaching directly from their part-time jobs yeah. to attend classes, yeah. right? And they were making sure that they are not late to, to, to the classes. Uh, so, you know, you will have to probably plan accordingly that let's say if you're working anywhere, how close it is to a bus stop and how close it is to your uni so that you can reach in no time. Let's say even if you have been given a last minute notification, let's say a day before you've been to that tomorrow, uh, tell this to your employer and at the same time you have to manage your things that you reach there on time so you know plan it accordingly okay on a bit of a different note um just wanted to also ask you how much of a support system did the university you know did you feel you could go back to the university whether like you had mentioned you know whether it was visa related whether that was course content whether it was your class structure whether it was just yeah. the very basic stuff as soon as you go there how much of a support system and confidence do you feel that, you know, a student should approach and, you know, how much of that support system did it give you? That's such a valid question, Anil, because I feel that a lot of students basically not even utilize that, that resource that they're really? having. They, yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot of, of confidence. Students, 
uh i wouldn't say lack of confidence i would say lack of awareness that there okay. are so many resources available uh, mm-hmm. within their university that they can access and get to the right information um so i i would say as soon as you land here in the uk and as soon as you start your course uh, approach different departments you know or at least familiarize yourself with different departments at your uni because i have got a lot of help you know uh, from from those departments in my uni they were super approachable super accessible every time i dropped them an email i got a response in you know uh, within within the timelines that i was expecting so uh, for example uh, there may be a visa compliance department at your uni or there may be a students advice department at your uni there may be a placements uh, department at your uni so you know familiarize yourself with these departments and they are quite accessible and approachable you know so there is no reason why if you will ask a question to them that they wouldn't would reply you obviously they will reply you it's all about it is about confidence and it it is about awareness as well so you should be aware of all the points where you can get that right information from at yeah. least in my case i've always got the right information whenever i have needed it uh, another thing is that uh, at times you need some uh, letters you know at times you need uh, address proofs or you know information like these that you you are studying with a specific university yeah. or what 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 are your uh, term time and things like those uh, let's say if you have to open a bank account you may have to furnish it as a proof uh, that you are a student so those uh, kind of things are also available either it can be manual where you can write an email to yeah. um, you know your uh, compliance uh, Uh, or student advice teams and you can get that letter or it will be accessible via your university portal the way it was the case with me where i just logged into my university portal and downloaded those letters so uk is beautiful and uh, you've obviously had your course you've you had your time off because you were not working so did you get up to any recreational travel have you done a little bit how did you how did you spend that off time i mean it, it's surely not all study 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 there's there's a lot more to it and um, yeah. you know did you is it as simple as or yes. is it one of those things that it's <laughs> you know a long drawn out budgetary situation so there's a there's a funny thing that i would like to mention i have been a die hard cricket fan since you know since i was a child mm-hmm. um and the aura around us you know back in india is such that you have to love cricket right there is no reason why you wouldn't love cricket when i was coming here to the uk i was told by many of my friends that you'll see yourself transitioning from cricket to football football and i was like it will not happen you know because i have happen. seen myself can <laughs> <laughs> happen so you know although i was familiar with the you know uh, the footballing legends uh, but to very limited capacity and as you've rightly mentioned that it has happened with you i would say i saw a similar transitioning ha- ha- happened with me that when i when i came here the the vibes and you know the fan following and the people around me uh, they automatically convert you from being a fan of any sport to at least start watching football Mm. right so that was one of the activity that i picked up watching football games okay learning to know about you know sports and things like those so that was one transition that happened second is that uh, although this wasn't a primary reason of choosing uk but obviously this was one of the factors in mind uh, that uk is very beautiful scenic uh, yeah. and you know there are p- places where and quite approachable from you know important cities like london where you can go and you know for a weekend get away and you can enjoy and then probably come back and resume your studies uh, and it's not that so, expensive these weekend get away don't you know they're not going to break the bank irrespective the flight tickets are cheap your travel is cheap your stay is cheap yes. you can backpack to a lot of places so it's it's very accessible absolutely uh, and i would say in ex- expectation versus reality uh because i was running on a budget and i had planned my budget i thought that okay for initial few months i wouldn't really go out at all because anyways i had planned that i would not be doing a part time i would be focusing on my studies mm-hmm. i thought that okay i would no, not go out and i would not do the, these weekend trips because i wanted to save every penny you know as much as i can but then i got to know that 
as you've rightly mentioned those those destinations aren't that expensive you know yeah. you have to have the right resources for example there's this application uh train line right uh and train line um, basically tells you uh you know tra- it it gives you details about all the it's it's like make my trip or go ibibo or booking.com you know but basically about trains and coaches so that you can travel to various places within the uk uh so that you know when i got to know about that application i got to know that you know it isn't that expensive i can take a train to you know let's say edinburgh or glasgow or any place else in the uk a beach destination and i and can reach there in no time yeah last minute deals and then mm-hmm. probably i can reach there in like 2 hours to a half hours take coaches which are even you know less expensive mm-hmm. so yes i would say there are a lot of travel opportunities don't restrict your, restrict yourself in those uh you know you would get to know people and you would really get to know about about the culture here which is uh, you know fabulous which is a large part of the education structure or choice to study there yeah. anyway it's not always yeah. about that job or about that classroom structure or about the course of the university if you don't get out and impress yourself with what's around you yeah. you know tomorrow uh, you didn't work for your first year but you're yeah. now going to be on the run for the next 35 years it's going to be work Absolutely. work work because now your focus is going to go towards career and now Absolutely. now the you know the rules of engagement change so it's good that yeah. you, you know you took out the time you focused on your education but then you also lived a little which is just as important you can't just yeah focus on education yeah. all the time uh Absolutely. so moving on to something a little bit different now so let's take for example a student is watching this whose visa is granted right um mm-hmm. there's a lot of research that a student does like yourself before but a lot of the research content changes once the visa is granted now yeah. the visa is granted what advice would you give to students you know before reaching the uk when they're in this planning stage of okay my visa is done i don't need to focus on my visa anymore i don't need to focus on any of that now i need to pack my bags or i need to get stuff in order what advice would you give to these students hmm and that's a very important question uh because that will lay a very important ground when you actually reach here in the uk and sort of lay foundation for you uh one essential thing is making sure that you have all the documentation ready uh because when you're flying or when you land here in the uk you, you can be asked any piece of information not that at you know at the university at the airport. Airport. okay at the airport uh, even at the university you know not that it happened with me but it can happen it may happen okay. that they can probably ask you you know if you're carrying some sort of medicines if you have you know the right prescription for them you know a, a letter from the doctor and things like those uh, probably if you're carrying currency if you have a proof for that you know mm-hmm. so things like those and let's say uh, you have to prepare yourself for the weather as well uh, it rains a lot Yeah. it it pours so yeah. uh, you know you can see uh, it will be bright and sunny and as soon as you will go out it will start raining i'm not complaining but this is the beauty uh, you know and this is the flavor of the country yeah. uh, i enjoy it i enjoy multiple weathers in the same day so, but i prepare my uh, for for that accordingly so you know uh, one thing that you can do is uh, you can carry some sort of weather protection gear in terms of the shoes that you're wearing uh, or carrying can be waterproof because you know that you know it can rain any time and probably mm-hmm. carry you know couple of umbrellas along with you <laughs> although you will get those things here as well but you know for initial few days yeah and then probably you can carry some uh, you know clothing that can be again weatherproof windproof weatherproof waterproof so that when you're going out you can you can uh, be at comfort uh things like those and then again you know as i mentioned uh you know probably your medication with the right sort of prescription whatever is allowed in yeah. the country make sure that you do your research on those grounds okay uh, uh sorry anil there another another information that I would, i would like to share something that really helped me early on was uh the multi currency card so what sorry so the multi currency card uh, okay yeah so initially when you land here in the uk you will probably not have a bank account mm. uh, you will only have access to either the hard cash or you know probably a multi currency card that you will be carrying from india yeah i feel that although hard cash is acceptable everywhere mm. but you know a multi currency card is is a safer option is a better yeah. option 
um you know i didn't face any issue the only thing that that was required was that uh, you know again that's a very small piece of information uh, because, because that wasn't a domestic card and it was more of a international so when you swipe it through the machines they may ask you to sign and match those signs with the one that okay. is on the card that's about okay. it but otherwise you know you can link that card to your bank account you know whenever you need, need money you can transfer it there and then this is my advice and opinion but again it depends upon how you want to conduct it okay so we've covered the things that students should look out for before they go how about once they get into the uk right what are those initial things that students should be focused on to get started like you mentioned a bank account there so at what stage do you think these are the steps that you know that students apart from the university and going to the university and and all that orientation i'm not talking about that i mean the other things you know beyond the university what in your opinion should students from india be aware of and what they need to do or how they should prioritize you know the initial steps okay so the most important thing here in the uk as soon as you land is uh, figuring out your brp uh, the okay. residence permit the reason why i say that is that sorry <coughs> i'm really sorry no worries so, no worries wherever you will go um you know if let's say you are applying for a part time job or you know other avenues you may have to show your brp um, mm. as a proof so that is something that you should uh, figure out early on i mean it again depends i believe it is generally told that in what time frame you will receive your brp yeah. and where you can collect it from so that is something that is a part of the visa process itself Other uh, than that, you know, uh, something that I mentioned initially as well. As soon as you land here in the UK, don't restrict yourself. You know, make yourself familiar with the public transport, which is very very good, and it'll be a part of your daily routine. So, travel in the tube, travel in buses, explore the city, explore the places, and then you will be quite confident. Then you know, uh, you know that once you understand the public transport, you can reach from point A to B. B then your accommodation problem is solved. because you yeah. can stay anywhere your university may be in zone 1 and you can stay in zone 4 and zone 5 and still save a lot of money and then transfer no, tra- you know save a lot of money and then uh, you know travel to your university in no time so those are the things that you should do uh, sort of get accustomed to the climate uh, get accustomed to rain and multiple weathers in the same day mm. uh, um, you know identify some stores grocery you know and those sort of stores for yourself because uh here everything is available so when i landed here after i completed my quarantine i i sort of figured out okay if i have to stay in this specific area is there an indian store or not because ultimately no matter how good the food is here after a certain while you will crave for your home food you know your comfort food so I, i you know that is something that you can do a research about that whether an indian store is available and things like those so these are the few things early on that i would like to advise any challenges faced towards opening up a bank account or any additional documents that a student should take from india which will help them open up that bank account there um no uh, you know if i correctly remember arnold uh, when i had opened my bank account it was a student's account okay yeah so again there are multiple options uh, while opening a bank account uh one of the options is that you can just open a student's account which is quite easy <clears throat> to open and doesn't have a lot of formalities it'll probably require a brp a passport and a letter from your university that you're studying okay. and you know the details of your uh, mm-hmm. course uh, that's what was uh, okay sorry uh, my bad i missed on a very important information to open a bank account you would need a address proof yeah that's what happened with me so uh, you know that is something that i should have talked about in the beginning itself uh, when i when i took my accommodation obviously i got a lease agreement and that uh, you know sort of acted as an address proof for me another important address proof that you know that you can use is that if you have got your lease agreement then let's say you are multiple parties on that lease agreement uh, probably if you have some bills on your name or council yeah. tax uh, receipt all those things can be your address proof again you know you can consult your bank and get that advice from them as well but Yes, uh, you can open a student's account, which will be fairly simple and easy to open, as compared mm-hmm. to a normal one.